Welcome to today's edition of the Anaglyph Jukebox. You never know what you'll find on the old jukebox. Let's press B31. Okay, we've got 3D Circus. The jukebox agrees with poet E.E. E. Cummings, damn everything but the circus. No genre of comic books was left untouched by the 1950s 3D craze, from superheroes to westerns to romance. So naturally, there were also kid comics, those designed for a younger audience. 3D Circus belongs to this group, but it also holds another significance. It is the only signed 3D story the jukebox can find by comics pioneer Jerry Iger. It's the fourth story in the book, and features Iger's signature little kid character, Bobby, along with Captain Patch. Iger had entered the nascent comic book field back in 1935, doing one-page humor strips with Bobby, whose misadventures were based on his nephew, Arthur. A decade before that, he started as a news cartoonist for the New York American, a leading daily paper despite having no art training whatsoever. Iger also contributed two stories to Famous Funnies, the comic book series that almost single-handedly created this new industry. Put the blame squarely on Maxwell Gaines, father of William, and founder of EC, Educational Comics, and Eastern Color sales manager Harry I. Wildenberg. These two somehow convinced executives at Dell Publishing that their 68-page color periodical, printed on cheap pulp paper, could become a vacuum cleaner, sucking up the hoard of dimes held by the nation's children. So Iger is there from the very beginning of the comic book format, the golden age of comics. Iger is also listed as the art director for 3D Circus, a one-shot publication, so his hands are likely all over this issue. Iger may be most remembered today for the comic shop factory he ran with Will Eisner that provided finished pages for the early comic book industry. Before original characters, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Captain America, Human Torch, Submariner, Captain Marvel, became leaders of the field, comic books consisted largely of reprinted material, primarily recycled newspaper strips. The two young entrepreneurs thought they saw a market opportunity arising when the big publishers ran out of material to reprint in this new saddle-stitched booklet format. They were right, and they made a small fortune because they were. Eisner and Iger was formed in 1936, and they quickly became the chief supplier for publishers like Fox Comics, Fiction House, Quality Comics, and others. The studio's profit was $1.50 for a finished page that involved the contributions of an editor, a writer, a penciler, and an inker, at the very least, all working in an assembly line fashion. Eisner says that in 1939, he and Iger split $25,000, or half a million dollars in today's currency. In the decade before he passed at the age of 87, Jerry Iger was pleased to see compilations of his seminal work republished by Blackthorn Publishing. It only seems fitting that Samuel Maxwell Jerry Iger was given the field's highest honor in 2009 when he was inducted into the Will Eisner Comic Book Hall of Fame.